Hello cool artisans, my name is Shonda and welcome to my channel Under the Needle Quilting and Crafts. Um, so I'm here because it's Thursday, so I'm here for Thankful Thursday. Um, this was the most boring week ever. When I tell you, it, I didn't do anything. Like, like I did stuff, but it's like I didn't do anything. It was so, it was just, it was the most boring, the most boring week ever. It was so boring. Um, so last Thursday I had class. I went to my water aerobics. Friday I, I had work. That was it. I think I took my son to work and picked him up. That was it. That was it. <laughs> Did nothing. Um, Saturday, my daughter came over and, um, cause I was going to go to class on Saturday, but I had things that I needed to do around the house. I really needed to clean my laundry room. And when I go to class on Saturday, it takes a lot out of me. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't going to want to come home and do like any kind of hard chores. And so I didn't go to class on Saturday. So I spent basically all day Saturday cleaning my laundry room and anything else in the house that I hadn't already cleaned. <laughs> Boring. Boring. Um, now on Sunday, um, you know, had a little bit of activity because uh, my sister's husband came over with his kids and they used the pool. And so Adrian got out on the grill and he did some hot dogs and we um, had a couple of packs of lamb in the freezer. So we took that out, seasoned it up and he put the lamb on the grill. So, you know, that was that was a good time. That was the only thing I did. Monday work, Tuesday work, water aerobics, Wednesday work, today work. I did not go to my water aerobics class because um, I just didn't. Um, I mean, honestly, because I, I kind of, my brain was thinking it was going to be canceled because it was raining. It was starting to rain. And so I was expecting it to be rained out and canceled, um, but it wasn't. But I still just didn't go. Um, normally, she'll email us at five, no later than 530 to let us know if, if it's canceled. And I had checked my email at like 525. I didn't have anything. And then I completely lost track of time. It was like 609. Now, I still could have gotten dressed real quick, gotten in the car, and gotten over there. And I would have missed probably the first 15 minutes maybe of class. But I just didn't go. So I'm going to have to go Saturday. And I'm going to have to work hard. And tomorrow, I'll do some kind of workout. I'll do something tomorrow. Something. I'll do some extra walking, make sure I get my steps in. I'll do a little aerobic something. I'll do something to, to at least have some movement. But yeah, it just completely uneventful week, completely uneventful. <laughs> um, as far as my project life, I did finally finish my second little table topper here. So these are my little 4th of July table toppers. And I used a... Uh, insel bright in them so they are heat safe and these will be on the table when we have our party i do need to go and trim my threads i haven't trimmed the threads so right now i'm looking at all these threads hanging so i still need to trim my threads but you know i just did some rudimentary quilting because i don't really this is not you know this is just going to go on my table you know for a couple of days um a couple of months ago Adrian and I went to Pop Shelf. I don't know if you guys have heard of Pop Shelf or if you have one or not, but I love that place. Um, they have just super inexpensive little stuff, like decorations for your house. And then they also have like, it's like five below. It's like five below, but better. That That's how I think of Pop Shelf. Like five below, but better. Um love that little store but i mean everything doesn't cost less than five dollars but as far as the type of stuff that they sell it reminds me very much of five below except i just i just think they do a better job of it love me some pop shelf um so i got me some cute little fourth of july decorations so you know the table can look kind of nice and, and decorative and festive or whatever whatever um so yeah that was my week um what else oh I did do a little bit more sewing. I finished up these blocks. Um, this was the day three project for the Scripology retreat. This was a table runner project um, called Little Inga or Lil, Lil Inga. Um, I don't have a picture of the pattern right now, but um, 
I finished these blocks and got them all squared up. So I'm excited about that. Um, and since they're so small, you know, I think they're going to be really easy to just kind of lay these out and kind of put this topper together. So that's something I really want to get done. I'd like to get this, uh, at least the top put together. If not, I'm not expecting to get it like quilted or even basted. I don't even, I haven't even chosen a back end yet. So I don't expect any of that. Um, I really would just like to get the top done. Um, and then also I have another wall hanging project that is partially quilted. I would like to finish the quilting on that and perhaps get it bound. That would be nice to get that done. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that's all the sewing that I've done. All the sewing that I've done are the blocks and finishing my second uh, little table topper. As far as crochet, I have done a little bit more crochet. I've been obsessed. I haven't worked on my blanket. I haven't been working on this because I've been obsessed with the dishcloths. I've made two more. So now I have a total of four. I think last week I showed you two. I've done two more. So now I have four. Um, and I have enough yarn, I think, to make another one or two. Definitely one. Definitely one. A two, two might be kind of pushing it. Two might be kind of pushing it. I think I might end up making a total of seven which would I'd have to get more yarn for that but I think I would like a total of seven because one thing about the cotton dishcloths I'm really really good about wringing all the water out and and laying it to dry everybody else in my house isn't so good at that and they get knocked into the sink where they stay wet or people use them and they don't rinse them out or let or hang them properly to dry and then you know that can breed bacteria so i think what i might do is have a total of seven that way i can have one for each day of the week and then just wash them at the end of the week but who am i kidding i'm probably going to have to make double that and have a total of 14 of them because uh you know i'm i'm not the best at keeping up with washing stuff so we'll see um i think i'm going to end up getting a little bit more cotton yarn um the blue is crafter secret so it's like the cheapest cotton yarn that i know of 249 is gained at hobby lobby um the gray yarn is dishy from Knit Picks, so it's a better quality yarn, but I don't really care about that because I'm using this as, you know, to wipe off my stove and countertops. These are going to get dirty. Um, and a few of the ones that I made, you know, they have these lighter colors in them, so the dirt is going to show much faster. So I think I might get more darker colored yarn, um, darker blue, more gray um, and make me a few more of these. I just, I don't know. It just gives me a little speck of happiness um, when I'm cleaning just to pick this up and just to see the color and also just to know that I made it. It just kind of gives me a little spark of joy because uh, I hate cleaning and there's five people that live in this house and so things have to be wiped down all the time. And so for me, it just, you know, it's just a nice little treat to be able to clean with something pretty. Um, as far as what I'm thankful for, I think part of my, I was in kind of a, I was, you know, going into kind of another funk. And I think part of it was because I was consuming a lot of news. Like I was watching the news every day. There's been so much going on. So baby, basically probably for the, for the last year, the majority of content that I consume online has been news. And our news lately has been pretty devastating. And I think it was contributing to my mood, uh, my, that the funk that I was feeling. Well, about three weeks ago, <laughs> I was looking through, you know, looking, checking to see the news and see what I wanted to, what articles I wanted to listen to, or what podcasts I wanted to hear. And this video came up. It was just, you know, in my, in my feed and it was about cave diving Let me tell y'all, I became obsessed with watching these cave diving uh, videos. I, I didn't know that was the thing that people were out there doing. So I started watching videos with caving and cave diving. And basically people that got stuck in caves and they couldn't get them out, or people who got stuck and got rescued, cave diving accidents and, and deaths, and that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. 
you know, when I look at news on a global scale that affects the world, that 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 will affect me. But just knowing a story of something that something tragic that happened to someone that doesn't impact me as much. I've always liked true crime a lot. I was always forensic files, 48 hours, the first 48, you know, FBI files, Joe Kenda, Homicide Hunter. I love all of that. So that kind of stuff didn't bother me. So I started watching those videos and then I kind of went down this rabbit hole and I found two specific content creators that I have been just binging their content. And that is one is um, it's called Coffee House Crimes. I think it's what it's called. Coffee House Crimes or something like that. And it's this guy named Adrian and he tells these true stories about, you know, murder or mystery and the other one is mr ballin i love the way he tells a story um i have just and i've just been consuming a lot of that i've been scrolling news and i might watch a little article you know a little video or two but i'm not watching hours. i was watching hours of news four or five hours a day of news and I think it was contributing to my hopelessness. <laughs> it was feeling kind of, I was feeling kind of hopeless, <laughs> you know, because I think when you start, when you consume too much news, it, you, it can lead to a sense of, of dread. And I think that's part of what was happening with me. And so I think kind of simultaneously, I changed the content that I was consuming and I started getting out the house a little bit more. And so I think that, um, really, really helped. So I am really, really thankful for the new content that I found on YouTube to uh, keep my to keep my mind occupied. Other creators that I watch a lot, I love Jamie French, but I've watched most of her content. You know, I've seen a lot of it, so I've gone back and found some of her stuff that I haven't watched and added it to a playlist. And there's another content creator I like very much. She's much younger than me. Her name is Kenny JD. And she does something called bad movies in a beat because, you know, beat is slang for like having a, your makeup well done. And so she reviews a bad movie. And when we talk about bad movie, I don't mean like a lifetime bad movie, which some some might be. I'm talking about like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes bad. Some of them are major motion picture films, um, but a lot of it is like, you know, she did Sharknado. I love movies like that. Give me, give me that horrible sci-fi. That's one of the things I missed about cable is I used to love I used to binge those sci-fi movies. I need to go I need to go find where I can find those now. I used to watch sci-fi on a Sunday. Um, I love me some shark movies, alligator movies, um, any type of giant bug or creature or, you know, mega shark versus megalodon versus giant squid, octopi. Give me, give me all of that. I love that kind of stuff. So I like watching that series. Um, Jamie French also does bad movies as well, but hers would tend to be more stuff that you might have known or seen, although she does find some rare gems <laughs> sometimes. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been doing lately. Uh, that That's how I've been spending my time. <laughs> Coming up this weekend, like I said, I would like to get some sewing done. Um, and I still need to clean up down here. Basically, everything is done except uh, the gazebo. I got some new decorations for the gazebo, so I need to do that. I plan on doing that this weekend. And I also, um, we need to clean up down here and just kind of get some stuff in order down here. It shouldn't be, but that's something like Adrian and I have to do together is down here. So we'll probably do that. Well, not probably. We'll definitely do that this weekend because this is the last weekend we have to do it. So um it's gonna be a fun time cleaning <laughs> so i'm gonna go to class on saturday and then after class i'll probably maybe sit and do a little bit of sewing and once i've recuperated <laughs> then uh adrian and i'll probably get down here and start getting some getting some stuff down here done tomorrow's a light work day also so I want to try to get up early 
and get some sewing done before work. Because if I get a nice groove, then it'll be easy for me to step back into it when I get my lunch break. Because when I'm really busy, I don't take a lunch. I just kind of like to work through it. Um, but I have a light day tomorrow, so I know I'm going to be able to take my full lunch and my breaks, and I'm using all of that time to sew. So I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about this weekend um, and just having everything done. Um, oh, I'm doing a giveaway. I'm doing a giveaway, y'all. Giveaway video. It's going to be up here somewhere, okay? Up there somewhere. Um, I'm doing a giveaway. Um, I unboxed the sew sampler yesterday. And when I unboxed it, I mean, the fabric is pretty. It's just not my style, right? It's Jelly and Jam by Fig Tree. It's a, it's a unique jelly roll in that all 40 prints are unique. Sorry, uh, Honey Bun. It's, a, it's unique uh, because every, every strip is unique. There are no duplicates. And I almost wanted to keep it just for that, just for the novelty of it, because I love stuff like that. But I just don't work with honey buns very often. I don't really enjoy working with one and a half inch strips. Um, and this pattern, I know I'm not going to make this pattern. Maybe one day, but certainly not in the next five years. I've got so many patterns that I just adore and love and want to make so badly that this is not going to be at the top of the list anytime soon. So why am I going to hold on to this? Why? So I'm giving it away. Uh, it makes a 42 and a half by 46 inch quilt. And I'm also giving away this creative grids tool that is used to make said quilt. So this is what, 35, 45, like $63 in value. Because I think this ruler is, uh, that quarter shop put it at $18.50. They put this at $10 and they put this at $35. So I'm giving it away. So just click on that video. And in the comments on that video, not this video, in the Fat Quarter Shop video, comment the word peach in that video, and you'll be entered to win uh, to the giveaway. So uh, that is it for me, and I'll see you guys uh, in a week when I announce the winner. I will be announcing the winner one week from today. And it will be announced live. I will not be picking people from comments. If you see someone commenting that you're a winner, that is not me. The only way I announce winner is I'm going to announce it out loud. And then you'll know you won. All right. So that's it for me. And I'll see you guys next video.